the Warriors of Fringe and Latin come in at 17 and 1, I believe. Yes, that's what the uh, stat sheet says. No scores. Regular season, no scores. So. Chelmsford 5 and 5 coming off a 65 64 win over, over uh, St. John's Prep in the first round of the playoffs. Cambridge got a bye for the first round. Skoma's going to get fouled and go to the line for two. Two nothing. The score fifteen. Set the line. Cambridge in the last leads two to nothing. What? The Falcons of Cambridge Ridge and Latin. Now a two one lead is. Scomas hit his second shot. Here's Ford with the ball. Gonna be on number 22, Matt Skomas. His first, not a shooting foul. Quickly over. Harris gets it to four. Four from the top. Francois. Harris. Can't get the shot up. McCusker coming down with him. Some play right. Two down, Chelmsford. That's going to get the Chelmsford side crowd. Chelmsford crowd looking for something big here from these Lions. Hype all week in school for this game. Charge on Fort. Can you even tell where the Mistress Gym here is? All Chelmsford right now. It certainly is. Chelmsford brought along a huge crowd. They only have a the quarter of the gym for themselves. Now Craig up. Oh, And now Cambridge crowd gets into it. Still going to be Chelmsford ball, though. As it was. Cambridge is the second seed in Division I North. Chelmsford coming in as a seventh seed after being St. John's. Other games going around. Andover at, went to Medford last night at 7. They have Everett at Haverhill, just as we speak, and South Boston is at Central Catholic. That game later this afternoon, 4 o'clock, of course. You won't be seeing this for a little while. Looks like it's going to be McCusker to inbound for the Lions. Conference of the scorers table. The shump. There's some dispute over something we can show right now, but they'll use it as a timeout. The Chelmsford cheerleaders conspicuously absent from today's contest. No? Easiest place to find. Right uh, yes, we have figured that out <laughs> many times. If you're noticing any technical problems right now, it's because we had to hurry up to get this thing uh, going. It's a nice shot of CHS coach Charlie Mickle and the rest of the Lions team. Camera work today being provided by the great Tom Peterson, our executive producer director. And this is a message from the MIAA. The rights fee for the escape pass has been waived by the MIAA on behalf of the students of Chumpson High School. The MIAA represents 340 senior high schools across the Commonwealth and the 140,000 young men who participate annually in MIAA government athletic competition. Any rebroadcast or republication of this program without the written consent of the MIAA is prohibited. So there. All the broadcast rights you wanted to know, or in our case, probably didn't want to know, and, uh, you know. 
But yes, this is an MIAA production, whatever, even though CHS Sports, coverage of Chumpstreet High School basketball. So this has been a pretty long officials timeout. We're trying to decide whether to call a foul on uh, number 33 for uh, Baker. Trying to going to sort of go for a foul and yes, Craig's going to go to the line for two. I don't know what the call was, but Craig's getting the boost and he misses the first shot. Chumps, the Cambridge crowd trying to make a lot of noise and hits the second shot. Craig makes his second shot on the technical. So it's now three to two Chumpsford with the lead. Four to two. Four to two. And Chumpsford gets the ball back. Maybe not, it wasn't a shooting foul, so. Chumpster gets the ball back underneath. McCusker to inbound. 42 to the score. Break down. Santos, one of the captains of this team, Craig, over to Hart, puts up the jumper. Nice jumper, set it up perfectly, just inside the three-point line. Nothing but net. And there's going to be a foul. Francois was the one who put the shot on. Adam McCusker gets the foul for his CHS. Number 22 Harris will get a rest. At the line is Francois. 63. Chumps with leading. And the second shot. went for the rebound a little too early, so there'll be a penalty shot. So he gets an extra shot. And he makes that one. And it's now a 64 ball game, a full court press from Cambridge. Skomas. Skomas drives now. Jammed it, trying to say, in your face. Baseball pass to Skomis. Skomis, back the other way. Puts up the jumper. Rebounded, Francois. Oh, and it's going away. Francois, that's it. And the game just became the lead, eight to six. They've had two consecutive drives, leading into an easy play. It's good hustle underneath by Francois to pick up the ball and put it up. Not only the Cambridge crowd come around, Hart is fouled on the way up. They go to the line for two. Eight six, so Hart, if he hits both of them, has a chance to tie the game. Cambridge. 
Francois. And what do you know? He's coming in off the bench. Interesting. Part makes a second. Not bad. 8-7 the score. On the outside. Ford. Oh, and it's stolen by Santos. Coming up the other way. Craig all the way. Yes! Danny gets it. Nice play, Danny Craig. 9 8 the score He's now. He's not afraid to put it up there. Certainly is he. He's gotten big rebounds when they needed him, even though. Probably the shortest guy on the court. He hardly clears five feet. Actually, he does clear five yeah. feet. 5 6. 5 6. Five, six. Division two North in first round action. Danvers beat Maskinom at 56-52. Tewksbury over Belmont 74-69. That was a big surprise, seeing as Tewksbury was the bottom seed in the tournament, the 12th seed, beating the. 12. They didn't even have a 500 record. Beating the fifth seed, Baltimore uh, Belmont 15 and five. Latin Academy beat Revere 51 to 39, and Arlington beat Westford 65 to 63. The big shocker in our division was Everett beating Lexington 77 to 66. I really wanted to see Chelmsford play Lexington a little later on because I have a few friends that are on the Lexington boys basketball team and I would have liked to see Chelmsford just go in there and whip them soundly and then just laugh at them. Everett came into Division One to play at 12th seed at 10-9 and nine, while Lexington had a cool 16-4 record home court advantage and yet they lost by 11 points. That Lexington field house though is a pretty big field house so it, the, new, it's, the noise level isn't very high in there as it would be like here because this is a very small field house. And the quarterfinal action in Division Two Danvers was at Charlestown yesterday. So it was Tewksbury at Wakefield, Latin Academy was at Salem, and on Friday Arlington was at Lynn English. Now to the lines, Adam McCusker shooting two with a score of 10 and 9, Cambridge leading. This is the first shot. We'll get another penalty shot. Same violation that caught Skomis. And, and he hits that one. Tie ball game, 10 piece. 11.25 left here. Now some full court press from CHS. Both these teams look very hyped coming into this game. They just look, both teams excellent coming out of the gate. Nice effort by McCusker driving in, but unfortunately not falling. Cambridge, number 10. Lovey Ford. Ford. Rebounded Santos. Santos is another small guy that's come down with a lot of rebounds for this Lion team. Puts up the shot, won't go. And it's rebounded. Very few of those, very few of those that Skomis will ever miss. Uh, uh, he, looks, he looks a little skinny up top. Shoulders a little bit broad, but you know. You never know. This, this Cambridge team certainly looks very, very big. There's one kid, number 10 for Cambridge, and that's uh, Lovey Ford. Lovey Ford. And he's 
He's a pretty small kid. Compared, looks like he's shorter than Dan Craig. Probably the same height about. Do you have the independent thing? Interesting article on the independent you read about the two bands, Dan Craig and Dan Hart. And the contributions they made to the team, which have been plenty this season. And they're both coming back next year. That's a good thing. You're going to see guys like Matt Skomas leaving. Yes. We're in the one and one phase. Skomas is the first one to score 11 to 10. Skomas the second shot on the goal. Top rebounding. There's the lovely four. Well, now this sounds like a basketball game here with the sneaker screeching on the floor. In Chelmsford, we don't have that. The rubber mat. The rubber mat. Craig is like a little pesky mosquito that won't go away. <laughs> Cambridge retakes the lead 12 to 11 and it's a one point game. Reminiscent of Tuesday night. That's gonna be Scobus with the ball. Pass out to, ah, yeah, what's his name? Whoa! So, Dan Craig, now who the hero of Tuesday night's games, with a shot, the winning shot, with five seconds left, and then a block shot to make sure the champs are one. Yes. That's a pretty jump on my mask on, champs are retaking the lead by one point. This is going to be a seesaw game all the way through. Now Mousseau looks like he has a patch over his right eye. Not over his right eye, but above it. So loses it, but Santos recovers, puts up the three. Oh no. Here comes Cambridge back. Lobby four. King, back to four. King. Oh, and it's stolen by Stonis. Nice steal. And puts it all the way. I think it was uh, Santos that got called with a slap. Chumps are still not over the limit, though. Team 12, Chelmsford. I'd like to see him open up the three point lead. Oh! Ford's gonna, the uh, foul's gonna be on number 50, Ford. Number 50, King, excuse me. Cusker now to the line. He has two shots. It's the first. No, no substitution. Skomas is just going back to play defense. Constitution going to be number 22. Harris coming into the game. In the starting lineup. And now coming back into the game. Didn't look like a killing block, but it's going to send Francois to the line anyway. 
Moses. So are there only four Ch Cambridge cheerleaders? And one of them looks like she's younger. One of them looks younger than Tara Lipinski, which I don't think is possible. The Musso called for the foul. Puts Cambridge in striking distance, 15-14. With Cambridge one point down. Won't go to Cambridge and Skomas with a rebound quickly up to Craig. Puts it up. No. Back down the way, Francois. Skomas gonna be called for the foul. Skomas was blocking my view, but it might look like a pretty clean block. Skomas, of course, the league MVP. Hey, let him play! Kickball. McCusker coming out. Here's Sit. King with the ball for Cambridge. Francois. Back to King. Harris. It's the three. That's going to make. Puts up the jumper. Won't go. Cambridge with the rebound. There's King the other way. King. Post to cross and he'll be fouled. 6.31 left. 17 to 15. The score. Fouls on Dan Hart. Quickness dribbled around that move, so. And Cambridge is taking. Definitely much stronger than CO Chester. Lions want to talk it over. Coach Mickle, not happy with the events going on the past couple minutes. Cambridge is going to go. 20 to 15 lead now with 5.42 left here in the first half. Basketball in Eastern Mass in Division Three. The first round: Weston beat Whittier 89 to 55. Wilmington over Savio Prep 88 to 77. Shawshank Tech 65. North Andover 56. Bedford 99. Lynn Tech 67. 
North Cambridge Catholic won, Newburyport, Bishop Fenwick, and Webertown also won their games. Wilmington is at Weston today at 4 o'clock. And yesterday, Bedford was at Shaoxi Tech, and Newburyport was at North Cambridge Catholic at 2 o'clock yesterday. So a lot of going around in the tournament. All kinds of teams, Division I North, Division I South. North. And also, unfortunately, Division I North hockey action. Uh, just lost last night. Friday night. Friday night to Madden on two to one in overtime. Same team they lost to overtime last year. Oh, in and out for Skomas. Now back the other way, King. Not up, no good for Cambridge. Rebounded Skomas. Oscar for three. Oh, oh. Yes! Hey, yes. 20 to 18 now. Now lead is down. The game's back within two points. Nice shot by McCusker. the lower seed than Cambridge Ridge and Latin, but they're not playing like it. They're playing right into it. Francois, jump on the he gets his own rebound. And jumps three games to ball. Tied up at 20, 423 remains. The Falcons of Cambridge Ridge and Latin versus the Lions of our Chelmsford, beloved Chelmsford High School. But this isn't football season, so I won't start singing the CHS fight song. Number 11, Marcel, checked in for Cambridge Ridge and Latin. Santos. The Cusker now. And it's an offensive foul on Adam Cusker. 20 to 20, he's a score with 4-10 Sometimes you gotta think these charges are all theatrics. If you just joining us, this is a Chi Nene, Dan Kachukas, here at Cambridge Rings in Latin in Cambridge, Massachusetts, as CHS Lions take on Cambridge Rings in Latin Pythons. And Division I North tournament action for boys basketball over and over. I believe it's the Falcons. Falcons? The Falcons, yes. Oh, whatever. Oh, well, yeah. Let's get them over with and let's go on, huh? Yes. Let's hope so, at least. The winner of this game is going to play the winner of Everett and Haverhill, who are playing right now, I believe. Yes, one Their start time also on the clock. So, the shot won't go in, and it's stolen by Craig. Mm -hmm. thing you notice, uh, this Cambridge Ridge Latin team, isn't as big as the team we saw from St. John's, but they're certainly a force to be reckoned with underneath the hoop. I think they're actually a little stronger than St. John's. They have a lot more they, they, They've easily been able to take the ball. Like so got the rebound, but the ball is snatched right out of its hands. A much stronger ball court. I'd have, to, will check I'd have to agree there. So we'll get a break. But then you have to make an argument for someone like that 42 kid, whatever his name was, from uh, from North, from St. John's. Was it uh, Lucier, I believe? Wayne Lucier. The big guy, right? The big guy. The very big guy. Who Namuso stuffed twice. A little icing on the cake for Namu. A lot of good players there in St. John's last Tuesday. And they were ranked number one by the Boston Hill before the season. But... Definitely, they didn't rise to their expectations. Well, you know, don't forget too, they're a Catholic school, so they can recruit. There's Cambridge Ridge and Latin School. This is a private. This is a public school. School the Cambridge Public High School. Craig with the rebound. 22 to 20, Cambridge leads here with 3:17 left here in the first half. Hart now drives and he's blocked. Here comes Cambridge back the other way. Harris. Oh. 
Chumsen's going to have, have to come back. Those foul will be on Santos. That's his second personal. Eric Harris for Cambridge will go to the line. Harris's first shot is good. That's 23-20 coming into the game. Number 30, Francois, who had just checked out. It's both, 24-20. Santos to Hart. Skomis, all the way. Oh! Go. And it's gonna be a tie-up. No foul will be called on Cambridge. Cambridge coach doesn't like the call. But hey, that's life in the MIAA. Chelsea cut the lead to within two of those two penalty shots. team is a very, very fast team. You see them streaking up and down the court. And yeah, once they get the rebound, they just zip down the court. But that's exactly the way Chumsey plays also. Especially when the smaller guys like Santos and Craig get the ball. They just zip down the court. Here comes Lovey Four with the rebound. Harris. And he will be called. Oh, the rough He's hearing it from the Chelmsford crowd over there. If I was down there, I'd call a charge, but you know, I'm not down there. I wear the blue, I don't wear the stripes. Point Cambridge lead. Not a big lead though yet, so Chumsford could easily come back. They've gotten back in deficits, deficits like this before. Santos. Hart. Puts it up. Yes. Yeah. Nice move by Dan Hart, opting to go for the shorter shot. Chumsford really needs to start getting in there and getting those rebounds. The, uh, Cambridge Ridgeland is just killing him with rebounds at both ends of the court. Now, Moo coming into the game. 
and Steve Boss come into the game. Leaving is uh, Santos and Dan Hart. McCusker to inbound. I thought this was a basketball game, not a wrestling meet. With the playoff card atmosphere, anything can happen here. And when you really want the ball, you're going to play. I agree. I agree. Sager coming into the game for McCusker. Chumps is going to play a 2-3. the dunk Skomas had a little earlier, but nevertheless got the two points. Shot clock is off, 15 seconds remain. 30 to 26 to score with eight seconds now. Seven to six. Branch off, Marshall is blocked. Kimbrough will go to the line with seven tenths of a second. This crowd is not happy with the job these officials are doing. They get two shots. First one misses. Chelsea is playing as well as they possibly can. I think one thing that they need to do, they need to get inside and start rebounding the ball more at both ends of the court. They're having trouble doing that, and obviously the reason for that is Cambridge's larger size. But and we will be back, and we're back with the second half action between Cambridge Ridge and Latin and the CHS Lions here in boys basketball, Division I North, MIAA basketball tournament. Right now with the ball for the Lions. Craig now McCusker. Inside the Skomas, but it's broken up by Cambridge. Here comes Francois the other way. Francois, big part in the first half for Cambridge. Big rebounds and nice shots up there. Harris, King, now Francois. Those referees have been calling a lot. I'm surprised they didn't call anything on that, even though it was a clean block. Santos for three. That won't go. And it's rebounded by Francois. Harris to King. That's frustrating when it rings around the rim like that. But can't do much about it. Now right, now right back at the other end of the court, that's the inside game that I want to see Chelmsford playing. And if they, I don't know much about this Cambridge Ridge Lions team. You can tell that 
well just by the record, 17 and one that they've been able to dominate teams probably by their strength. Certainly. Their quickness, they're strong, but they're quick. So and playing. Playing in a division such as the Greater Boston League, where it's a city league, and you're going to have generally better ball players in the city. That's where most of the NBA players have gotten their roots, so maybe we're seeing a future NBA star on here on this Cambridge team. Do you think so? Uh, I'd, I'd have to say not. When we were playing South Boston, I forget what his name was. Jonathan DePina. Playing for UMass. I mean, he's someone we could potentially see in an NBA uniform in a couple of years, but. I think, the, I think the best shot anyone here has, maybe Skomas if he's lucky, if he has a good college career. Well, he does have that full squash in the Santos all the way. Yes! Not bad. And also you can look at uh, either King or Francois here for the... Uh, Falcons. They might have something in their future. Francois now inside a king, and he's going to be fouled as he puts it up. That looked like all ball. At Guinea in South Boston last year, we were both pretty badly there. This well, yeah. Is a much better team. Con considering that uh, South Boston, they were ranked the best in the state. I mean, even coming in. Actually, this team and last year's team, they're not that many different players. I, I don't know exactly what happened this year that made them play so much better. I think it's another year together. Reading in the paper, they've just, the chemistry is just awesome between, in, among this team. A little bit short on the shot. Sorry, do we see? I mean, first half was very physical, and they're picking up right where they left off. It's going to be on number five, Dan Craig. It won't be. An, it will be a non-shooting foul. This isn't what you want to see happen coming out. Chelmsford crowd trying to get back into it. It appears that they want to show us country bumpkins a lesson. like two minutes. Unbelievable. It is an unbelievable streak and I don't know. Is that Cambridge coming in the game 17 and 1 in the what was it Boston Greater, Greater Boston, Boston League. League. Greater Boston League. Uh, the silence is deafening this this uh, game is very silent. Should be a. I mean, whatever happens, I'd say. I don't know. Everett Haverhill, what do you think about that game? Everett Haverhill. Tell you, I do not know anything about those two teams, so I can't tell you a good opinion on that. Haverhill 
was coming in at the higher seed, so. Yeah, why well, don't we? But then after Everett coming off that win against Lexington. Spells out the luck of the Lions. Yes. Jumps are now opting to go with the bigger team. Looks like uh, Dan Hart is in a little bit of pain or winded or something. Walking around over there. Hope he's all right. Here we go. to McCusker and putting it in the hoop. They must train with weights on their shoes or something, the way they're getting up there. Cambridge Ridge and Latin just amazingly They're a pretty good all-around team. Forty to thirty-four. Ten twenty-nine left. One team can go on this huge run. That was ten and over by Cambridge. Now right back to the Lions. That's how basketball works. Can never be too sure of a lead, even if it's as much as ten or twelve. You certainly can never be so sure of the lead. We heard the Chelmsford crowd going up with the uh, "Here we go, Chelmsford" chant. This Cambridge. Crowd. Uh, it doesn't seem like the most enthusiastic of crowds. Only when the uh, ball is in their favor, another, ball is in their court. Big event we were at last night, talent show. How would you like that? That was unbelievable. That oh, that was that was an unbelievable show, especially right at the end. Blind sight, a fitting end to a great show. Also, the Spice Girls in there, and the MCs were just great. Yeah. 
Who do you think is funnier, Fred Marks or, or uh, Jeff Gallant? I can't tell you about that. I'm going to go with Fred, but... You know, with Fred? Because he didn't have to try as hard, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 I see what you're saying. Might be so, but nice rebound by McCusker on his knees of all places. Over to Harris. Inside. Thought he was fouled. But the put in right back. Jared King with the foul. Santos. He's fouled, and he'll head to the line. Two, two, 42 to 34 is the score with 931. Foul's going to be on King. And Santos is going to go to the line for two. King must be in a little bit of foul trouble. He's coming out. Six point Cambridge lead. Now why is it that our high school gym has a rubber flooring? Is it just because the other sports have a bit injured? Because this is a nice wooden board like the real basketball courts are. As Scopus gets a ball. I really never know about the rubber floor. Puts the shot in the hoop. So many opportunities there for Cambridge. The Cambridge lead back out to eight. you have to say about these Chelmsford fans, they're always in the game. Scholars for three. No. Here comes Cambridge back the other way. Ford almost loses it. Three. Two short. Four. New shot clock and they'll regroup. Six point lead. 44 to 38. 727 left. Possession arrow in Chelmsford's favor. Do we Bencher? Uh, no, Bencher's not. Yes, he is. Bencher's coming into the game. That's one thing they have. They have a real possession arrow. We had that yellow fluorescent thing <laughs> on our scores table at the CHS. I know. That's well, easy to see, though, at least. Yeah.
The lack of size you see really hurting Chelmsford. has been a very physical game. 44 to 38. That's King. Lewis will be called for the foul. King's gonna go to the line. He'll take two. So Jared King will get two shots for Cambridge. We lead 44 to 38 still. 6 to Seven point. That also is good. Stolen by Cambridge. He loses it. Craig. Everybody diving. Oh, about Chumsford ball. Chelmsford's keeping it within reach from the point where the difference has been the 10-0 run for uh, North Middle, for uh, not North Middlesex, for Cambridge. Right in the beginning of the second half, first Chelmsford tied it up at 30 apiece, and then Cambridge went on a 10-0 run, and now it's making 40-30, and now it's 46-38, eight-point lead. That's the difference. You take away that 10-point run, Chelmsford leads by a point. By two. By two, excuse me, a basket. the raffle number and I didn't win. Oh, too bad you didn't even get a ticket, Dan. Very true, true, but you know. You, you have to do that first, you realize. Oh, really, really, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think the last time I bought a raffle ticket was uh, at the Lowell football game at Collie Stadium. Beautiful, beautiful place, but yeah. Nice I love that place. But George, good old George Simonian Stadium is not that bad either, so. Not that bad. more realistic game off. Only a five point Cambridge leads. You know, Cambridge has a lot of good plays and they've made a lot of good plays, but as uh yeah, excuse me. But I but Chelmsford always doing something to stay in the game. Nice pass inside. Won't go. Rebounded right back by Cambridge. Seven point. Cambridge lead. with the rebound. Over to McCluster. Craig. Big shot. And the ball comes on the ground. Another tie up and it'll be Cambridge ball. Coming into the game for Cambridge number 22. Dan Harris. And number 40, Green. Kashan Green. Kesson Green. Nice effort by Dan Hart. Harris. Nice. Yes. Cambridge wants a foul. They're not going to get it. I love that. 
that that's that's a uh, that's a classic pose that the Cambridge coach has. And he's grabbing his own wrists. But that might be a signal, but. He was in three-point land. He'll go for three. Let's see. Will, 48-41, seven-point Cambridge lead. Number, number 11, Harris coming into the game for uh, Fort. Don't talk negatively. What's the nickname for Cambridge Rich in Latin? C-R-L-H-S? Oh no, Craig misses the first shot. CRLS. CRLS, Cambridge Rich and Latin School. No, it's not high school. I don't know, whatever. So we can bring him within five here, if he hits. Shops for ball. So they can get those two misses by an easy basket. 48-42, now a six-point lead for Cambridge. McCusker to inbounds. the saran wrap over the hoop. Three from Harris. Well, get a new shot block to work with. There's time on the clock. Harris will put the three up again. This is it, rebounded. It's blocked. Not bad, 48-42, still the same score. F less than four minutes remain. Six point lead. Score miss all the way. Won't go and rebounded by Cambridge. And he'll be fouled. And he's going. Exciting finish, just like the St. John's game. Chumps crowd now. Very quiet, misses the first shot. Cambridge giving Chumps a chance to get back into the game. It's not bad. <laughs> Certainly are. This is going to be a low scoring game from the beginning, and now the score 48 45, 323 left. Cambridge leads, but that could change very, very quickly. There's our beloved Lion bench with Coach Mickle bending over, or no, Coach Mickle in the middle of that pile, and uh, Coach O'Keefe there also. Chelmsford crowd really getting into it now. One thing in the article in the Church of the that got to me about the two Dans was how uh, Coach Mickle said how teams looking at these guys, Dan Hart and Dan Craig, look at them and say, oh, that's our mismatch right there. We can easily overpower them, and they are so wrong. Suddenly Hart and Hart and Craig just pound the ball in, in and they have no defense against it. 
I liken Craig to, as I said earlier, I liken Craig to a mosquito who just won't go away. He just keeps pestering you and finally gets inside. And Actually, you can say that about the same person too, and Costco and Hard and Scopus, all of them. They just don't go, they don't go away. Hey, we're in the birdcage. The Falcon birdcage. Shelter team looks very, very pumped out in the court. exciting finish. It was one or two points all through the first half, and Chumps are now chipping back. Oh, no! That rim has to be one of those wonky carnival rims. It's like oval. Too many shots that should be falling that aren't. Coach Mickel realizes there was a foul there and uh It's the first one. Cambridge picks it up. Out to Ford. If they do win, they will play the winner of Everett and Haverhill. And hopefully we'll be there. It'll be on the neutral side. Turn through the ball. Turn over by. 50 to 45. 218. his feet. This Chelsea crowd has a right to be angry. That was a horrible call. He didn't plant his feet. Couldn't have been a charge. if he hits this shot.
theme song for this Chelmsford, for this Chelmsford uh, team has to be the impossible dream. From 67 for the Red Sox, has to be. All right. Who would have thought it would be this close, this late into the game? The number the number seven seed versus the number two seed. One minute and two seconds left. 52 to 52 the score. This. They want to drown out this Cambridge crowd, and it might actually work. Chubs are only having one quarter of the stands. Wow, we! I can't say enough good things about the way Chubs is playing today. And here comes Cambridge out. They're getting a standing ovation. Chubs is getting a standing ovation. This entire building is on their feet. lost the ball. Chelmsford tied up at, at uh, what's the score? The score 52 all. 52 all. And the chant going up again. Oh, I love it. You gotta love this atmosphere. This Plays the winner of Everett and Haverhill, who are probably done by now. Maybe. Or they may be. I'm a sad because of Vaughn Burden just like this one. I'd like to thank director and cameraman and producer and whatever else you want to call him, Tom Peterson, for an outstanding job coming back out onto the court. Hart's going to inbound it. We're on our feet. their feet here at Cambridge. Yes! Yes! Yeah! This place is going bananas out here. Oh my gosh, 54, 52, 7.6 seconds left. Can you believe we're in the visiting gym? Uh, it doesn't sound like it. It doesn't sound like it. This Chelmsford team, this Chelmsford fans, God bless them. They're just drowning out the Cambridge fans. These seven seconds, six, ten seconds will be the longest seven and six, ten seconds ever in the history of life. Ah, uh, most likely. But then those 4.9 seconds at the end of St. John's game, ah, that was, that, that was, was long. Oh my gosh. 
CHS, 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 yes, go Lions, 54-52. Defense, Cambridge. St. John's game has been matched and it's not. And especially this one because we're the underdogs in this game. Certainly are. I think we were probably the underdogs in the other game, too, even though we had the higher seed. Amazing, the impossible dream. It's 1967 all over again. The only thing we're on the hard court and not the baseball diamond. You like baseball a little too much, Dan. Uh, yes, yes, yes. But never too much. Scobus in on the jump ball. Cambridge coming out, they're ready. Here we go, Chelmsford loading up. Skomis. Tips it off. That's tough, and are we in the one and one phase or the two and up? Dan Hart is a junior from Chelmsford High School. He'll be back next year. And hopefully next game. Hopefully next game, yes. Dan Hart's been a huge part of this Lion team. Then again, we had last Tuesday, or Tuesday against St. John's, Skomas fouled out with a little bit left. And now they're bringing in Tuesday night's hero, Namuso. The winner of this game will face the winner of Everett and Havel, which is going on at Havel as we speak, or it just ended. And the date and time is yet to be determined. And the, and the uh, place for that matter.
is going to go down to the wire. Yeah. Drive the stone. from Skomas, Hart, uh, Craig couldn't handle it. Out of bounds. That's okay, let's keep that ready here. Stop the surprise. 2.37 left. Bobby Ford. Tipped away, great. Yes! Out of bounds, and there's a foul foul. Foul on Craig when the ball was stolen. No, the foul was on Francois. So, Chumps regains the ball. I thought it was on Chumps because Cambridge fans started to cheer. Oh, yeah, the Chumpsridge fans were cheering also. It'll be McCusker to inbound for the Lions. Six all. Francois. Francois back to King. Easing up on the defense with the tie score. There's a jump ball. King gets his own rebound. Rebound. A foul. On King. This Cambridge crowd, uh, all these referees might need a little bit of police protection getting out of here. Jared King, he's just played a great game. He has nothing to be ashamed of. So uh, he's, he's, he played a great game. You can't say enough good things about Jared King. Unfortunately, well, fortunately for the Lions, he fouls out, and Ford's coming into the game. The score tied under a minute 30.
chance after chance to capitalize to take the lead and they 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 better capitalize. So Dave Craig now. We're having a little technical difficulties here, so here with us, Craig. Yeah! Nice pull up by Dan Craig. 47 seconds left. Lions lead now 58 to 56. Harris. And a foul call on McCusker. Good call by the official. McCusker uh, being called for the push. Just bumped him out. for two shots. They're in the two shot penalty stage. Actually, it's gonna be a one and one, I believe. I believe the official, he has two shots. The official signal, two shots. Well, this scoreboard doesn't tell you the team fouls like CHS scoreboard does, so a little hard to know what's going on. It's the first one, 58-57. Now to tie it, the second shot. One of the biggest shots of his life. Certainly could be. I mean, he makes this shot. It's tied up. It's a whole different ball game than if he missed the shot. He misses. Yes. They gave the lead back. Timeout, Chelmsford. Yeah, Chelmsford calling the timeout. 59-58. This is going to go down to the last seconds, as did the St. John's game. of a classic one and oh boy no shot clock anymore it's under 30 seconds 29.6 seconds left in the overtime oh boy that's all I can say oh boy this is gonna be let's see what Chemsford can do here chain of CHS comes up Crowd has to get into the game, not like the end of the second half. They really got to get into it. Any fouls will result in a one and one, I believe. So Champs has got to make its free throws in case that happens. Possession arrow is in favor of the Lions in case there is a tie up. So no need to worry about that. Here we go, folks. Buckle up. It's going to be a hell of a ride. I don't know if we can say that, but heck of a ride. Heck of a ride, yes. Craig now brings it up for the Lions. They can't turn it over here. McCusker. McCusker back to Craig. 14 seconds left. And a timeout called. Looks like it's been called on Cambridge. No, the timeout is from Cambridge. I mean, Chumsford. And they'll get it inside their own half court. 13.4 seconds. And so 13.4 seconds with the Cambridge Ringe and Latin Falcons leading Chelmsford Lions 59 to 58. That uh, 10 point run for the, line, for the uh, Falcons, really that's what did it for the Chelmsford Lions. I mean they, they saw the deficit that they had to bring back and they did that, they accomplished that. The score is tied at the end of regulation. And now Cambridge with a one point lead with 13.4 seconds left. So, could this be the last 13 seconds of Lions basketball this season? Let's hope not here. They have the possession of the ball. Second time the buzzers rang to call the end of the timeout. Both coaches don't care. Certainly seems so, and now here we go. In case you uh, removed your seatbelt, please uh, put your tray in the upright position and buckle up. Here we go. 
the bottom cushion may be used as a flotation device in case of a possible emergency. Yeah. Like a steal or some turnover. Now a timeout going to Cambridge. Another time, this is exactly what happened in St. John's. There were about three consecutive timeouts called right before the last few seconds of the ball game. For the most part, a whole crowd on their feet here at uh, Cambridge Ridge and Latin School. It's a packed crowd here. Three quarters of it Cambridge, but a whole quarter of this bleachers all belong to the Chelmsford Lions. And I think that one quarter of the bleachers for Chelmsford is making as much, if not more noise. Than I the think three it's more noise, actually. Than the three quarters that belong to Cambridge. Cambridge crowd has been a little quiet today. Not, I mean, not quiet, but certainly not as loud as this CHS I mean, fans this, have come out. Th this this Chelmsford crowd really realizes the effort that Cambridge or that Chelmsford is putting into the game. They appreciate it. Police protection up to six police officers here at the end of the game. Just in case. Is that an ominous sign or what? Glad to have Cambridge's finest with us. 13.4 seconds. 59-58. Craig gets a ball. 10 seconds. Stolen. 5.7 seconds left. Foul there. Don't worry, folks, it's still not over. They'll get two shots. Oh, no. They're going to have to have a big rebound here. If he make, makes both shots, they're going to have to have a big three-pointer here. And Skomis will foul out, so one of their leading scorers is gone. said there could not be a turnover but that's exactly what happened but a nice foul at the end there puts the pressure and look nobody is there to rebound mainly because the coaches want to use this free throw situation as a sort of timeout to go over some plays with their players 5.7 seconds left 59 58 is a score Cambridge in the lead they do have possession also Francois at the line for two. Putting it putting back in. It looks like Steve Boss is gonna come into the game to replace Matt Skomas. Steve Boss, a great shooter, along with many of the other players here on the CHS team. These are big shots. First shot. Misses. Misses again. And Was it a technical call or what? No. Cambridge does have the ball. No, no, Chimps. This is confusing. It will be Cambridge ball. Big stop here. 4.1 seconds left. I guess there was a technical call or something. Craig fouls him. go on to win. Do you think there's going to be pandemonium on the courts? Uh, it doesn't look like the Chelmsford, the Cambridge crowd is into it as much as the Chelmsford crowd. If Chelmsford wins, of course. This is the first shot. Wow. It's going to be a miracle for the CHS to get this, win this game, but miracles have happened before for them. Cambridge putting all their guys back. I think uh, with Chemsford, they're definitely going to rebound. There are no rebounders for uh, the Falcons, but with the rebound, they're going to call a quick timeout and get a good play going. Timeout. And that's a ball game. Ball not close. Still two tenths of a second left. And that is the ball game, folks. Two tenths of a second left, 59-58. Cambridge Ringe and Latin leading.
and he'll get three shots because it was on a three-pointer, I believe. It's on Adam McCusker. What can you say? They fought it to the end. They certainly did. McCusker now fouls out. That's the three top guns for the Lions now out of the game. They certainly shouldn't be disappointed. Nobody expected them to get this far at the beginning of the season, you know? They beat what was considered the number one team in the in the con in the entire in eastern Massachusetts by the Boston Herald last week uh, on Tuesday. I mean they've got a lot of accomplishments. They got the MVC championship ring. They have Matt Scomas League MVP, they have four All-Stars on their team. They've had an incredible season, nothing to be ashamed of, and it, they had to face a good Cambridge Ringer Latin team. Good, this Cambridge Ringer Latin team is, an, is excellent. An excellent team for Cambridge Ringer Latin. And so, Cambridge will go on to face the winner of Everett and Haverhill in the semifinals of Division I North play. They're going to get some rebounders in there. A.J. Sager. Tough loss for the Lions. But a well-fought one. To the line is Francois. He makes it a two-point ball game now, 60 to 58. Two tenths of a second left. This is definitely a miracle if they make this shot. It's going to be a full court shot, pretty much. That's it. The Cambridge Ranger Latin Falcons have defeated the Chelmsford Lions 60 to 58. They advance to the semifinals to meet the winner of the Everett Haverhill game. Oh, uh, it was a great fought game by both teams. You never expect a number seven seed to go and only lose by two points in overtime to the uh, uh, Cambridge Ridge Latin, the number second, the number two seed. Well, tough loss for the seniors of this ball club, Matt Scomas. This is their last game in a CHS uniform, but nothing to be ashamed of. They had a great senior season, and many of the juniors coming back, like Craig, like Dan Hart. Some of the others, now Musso also a senior. He will be going to college next year. And uh, this has been a great time for us here at CCTV and CHS Sports as uh, we've, we've covered many of the sporting events across and this has been our first season covering basketball, me and you, Dan. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, been, it's been a great ride both in the boys and the girls season. So, I mean, there's, not any, there's nothing you can say. There's too many good things you can say about both of these teams. Yeah, and we'd like to thank everybody in the TV club and at CHS Sports who's helped us. Everybody from producer Sarah Patterson, director Tom Peterson, and everybody else who's helped on camera, who's helped with the wires and technical support. Kurt Heinrich of the Parker Studios. We've had a great season. Thanks for joining us, folks. We'll be back next season.